Today we're going to make delicious homemade tomato sauce. Let's get started. Hello everybody, Chef Bob here today, and today I'm going to show you how to make to uh, homemade tomato sauce with uh, garden fresh tomatoes or maybe you went to a farmers market or uh, pick your own field and, and grab a bunch of tomatoes. So I have a bunch of those here and I'm just going to show you how I process them to you know get started making my homemade tomato sauce. Now what I typically do just for some background throughout the week because I usually make I like to do it in large batches so throughout the week I'm going to collect all the tomatoes from the plants normally put them in a big you know utility bucket or such and then at the end of the week, I'll wash them off, put them in bowls, and process them as I'm going to show you right now. Now in the past, I used to use the traditional blanching method where you throw the tomatoes in boiling water, then put them in cold water, peel the skins, but then you'll have to process the seeds out through a food mill and such. I found this method that I'm going to show you today to be much simpler, faster, and effective. So, in order to do this though, you'll need a KitchenAid mixer. So I just have the classic model here today. All you do is remove your power port and then use a, the grinding. You'll need a KitchenAid grinder or compatible brand grinding attachment for your KitchenAid mixer. So you'll just attach that into your power port and then tighten that up and put in your shaft. Now this is where, so you use the standard grinder piece for this, for the head assembly of your grinder. And now you'll have to buy the KitchenAid a strainer attachment. And that consists of this spiraled screw gear, the straining filter, and then a shield with a lid. So it's simple to do. You just slide this in here, attach the filter, and use your ring from your grinder. Make sure this is seated, the notches to seat your, your filter here. And just attach that as so, snug it up. Now they give you a shield to put over it. That goes on as so. And then a cover for the top, clear cover. Okay. And we need our top for our grinder, our bowl. Put that on, that just pushes on top, and then we have our pusher. Now you'll need two bowls and use this attachment. You're going to have the seeds and the skins come out the front, but then all your pulp and juice will come out the middle. It'll run down your, your trough here into your bowl. Now, what I want to show you is, let me get this cutting board out. What I do is I don't put them in whole or anything like that. I, I cut them in half first, or if they're very large, I'll cut them up into smaller pieces. Let me get these out of the way for a second. So what I'll do is, and sometimes I'll grab an accessory bowl. Well, I'll just use one of these bowls and show you. So what I'll do is, I just take a tomato, and I, I just slice it in half. Right? Just slice them in half. And that way, when it's going through the strainer, it'll be a lot easier to just extract the seeds and the pulp and the juice. So you just go through like this. So now... I'll load this up and show you what I do here. Let me cut some more and then we'll turn this on and get started. There was a larger one, so maybe I'll just cut that into fourths like so. You see, I'm just cutting them in half real fast and easy. And you can go through a large quantity of tomatoes very quickly, just, just slicing them in half. So now, let's set it up. We'll put our bowl out here, this one here. And I'm going to put this on, typically speed three on the KitchenAid seems to work well for me. Oh, let me plug it in. That's important. Now, get our pusher. We'll just start pushing them through. That takes a little bit of pressure. And then just feed them in. Now don't, don't push down too hard. 
does take some pressure, just a gentle pressure. You can feel them pull through. And I don't know if you can see already, but we're having some sauce come out into our middle bowl here, our sauce and uh, tomato bowl, or you know, the meat of the tomato. And that's what we're going to use for our homemade tomato sauce. I'll just run a couple of them through here and then let you see what the sauce looks like and then the seeds and the skins here. So I'm just going to go through a little more that I've cut here and then just stop it and show you what the results look like. So you can see it processes fairly quickly. It's a lot easier than blanching and putting in cold water and peeling the skins manually and stuff like that. Here's the skins and the seeds all coming out. And I guess if you wanted to, you could save this and then use these seeds to, to replant next year. Fine tomato seeds. So I'll turn that off. And I'll show you what it looks like in here. Here is your, your pulp coming out of your tomatoes. And then just goes into the bowl. And if you can see that, it's just a really great, uh, you know, meaty tomato sauce, which we're going to boil down. And I'll show you that. But that's simple, so, you know, I'm going to process all of these tomatoes you see in the same way. Now, as this, these are just the extra, a bowl from the mixer, and then I have an extra one. So I'm just using the KitchenAid mixer bowls uh, for this right now. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is, and once this fills up, I'll just put this into a, a nice size stock pot. This is an 8 quart, you could do a 10, you know, a large one, a 12, or if you're making a smaller quantity, maybe it's a 6 quart pot. What you'll want to do, and I'll show you in the next step after I process these, it's going to take a little time. You fill up your pot, and you're going to cook it down, oh, I'd say about a good 50%. So if you're using an 8-quart pot, you're most likely going to cook it down to about 4 quarts. So just to give you a heads up with that. So it's going to take a lot of tomatoes to make the sauce. So I'm going to process all of these, and as you can see, I did some the other day into some quart jars. And once you do that, now this is just a, a plain sauce, just this with some salt. And I like to do make some plain tomato sauce that I can use any way I want. Then I'll also make the full-blown, you know, Italian-style tomato sauce with all the seasonings. But And then I'll show you the different techniques for jarring. You can just jar it a hot jar without a water bath or a pressure can. Some people do that. Just heat your jars and put your hot sauce in there and seal it because tomatoes have a lot of acidity in them. Um, the preferred methods are use a water bath, or you can pressure can. So I'll show you those techniques coming up in the video. Right now, I'm going to pause this, I'm going to process all of these, put all the sauce in the pot, and then take you to the next step. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. I processed the two smaller bowls I had. I don't know, that might have been about uh, five, five to six quarts of tomatoes. And as you can see, these are four and a half quart bowls. And this one is probably up about four quarts full of sauce, which would be, you know, the sauce and then the pulp that we want to make our homemade tomato sauce. And here you can see is the skin and the seeds. So, you know, there's a good portion in here, but we have a lot of sauce. So just to give you an idea of how much you're going to get, we had about, and I should have measured, I'm going to guess five to six, or maybe five, five and a half quarts of raw tomatoes. That gave us about four quarts of sauce and then the skin and the seeds right here. So I still have to go through the much larger bowl and then the medium sized bowl. These were two small bowls. So that's probably going to give me, I'm going to guess, a good over 12 quarts, probably 12 to 14 quarts of sauce which we're going to cook down and we'll get about 50 percent out of that. So um, you know, if we get about 14 quarts of raw sauce, plan on getting maybe six to seven quarts of of real sauce to, to jar. So you lose a lot, you have to evaporate a lot down if you want to make it thick. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to, you know, put this into my stock pot that I showed you, empty that out, and then just keep filling this up. It's going to take me a little while just to go through all of this. But it's not bad, and I highly recommend using a strainer attachment like this to do the processing. So I'll see you back here in a little while once I finish all of this. Okay, we're back. I finished processing all the tomatoes. These are 10 quart uh, stock pots, and I have 8 quarts in each. So I got 16 quarts of sauce out of all those tomatoes. And here are all of the seeds and skins. This is a 4.5 quart bowl, so we have 
you know, four quarts, a little over four quarts of skins and seeds, and 16 quarts of sauce now. I didn't put this all away up because I just want to show you in case you're thinking of one of these strainers. Um, when you finish processing, there's still a lot of pulp and juice in here. So what you'll do is, at the end, you want to still have it a run after you finish putting your tomatoes and have it run until you stop seeing the skin and seeds come out. So after you finish putting your tomatoes all the way in, it'll take another minute or so. Sometimes I speed it up. I put on number four just to run the remainder through the machine. And that's about it. So we ran all those through, so you don't waste anything. I'm just showing you again if you're looking to buy one of these. And then give this a shake. So make sure you clean, you know, there's extra sauce and juice in there. And then look at all that's on here. You can get a spatula or to be honest, it's just easier to, to use a finger. I just washed my hands, so don't worry. Um, and just there you go. Just get all that good sauce off of the strainer filter here. Okay. Now, to clean this, you'll just disassemble this, which is pretty easy to do. It's pretty much just the reverse of what we did when I put it together, right? You can just take, sometimes it sticks, it'll take your top tray off, and then loosen this up. Actually, you can just take the whole piece off like this. And I'll take this to the sink, and then just reverse it. Take this off, pull out the, the strainer screw gear, take off the filter, and clean it. Now, a good way to clean this, I usually use a, a scrubby sponge on the outside. And if you still have some residue on the inside, just use a bottle brush. Go in there with some hot, soapy water on the inside, and use a regular uh, pot scrubber on the outside of this. And that should get all of these uh, the tomato pieces off of here. It's as simple as that. Now, the plastic stuff you can probably put in a dishwasher. I would not put any of the metal parts in a dishwasher. It depends on which brand you buy. This is a Chef's Choice brand, but a lot of these will discolor if you put them in the dishwasher. So I recommend hand washing all of this. It's not that difficult to do. Just use some hot soapy water and you'll be good to go. So we have approximately 16 quarts of sauce. And I won't show you this step, but I'm basically going to put these on the stove and cook them down. What you want to do when you cook them down is don't get impatient and turn it up on high and then let it go crazy because you can scorch it on the bottom and ruin all of your sauce. You probably want what you're wanting to do is put on maybe a medium heat to get it starting on a nice simmer boil, um, you know, a slow boil, just a little light bubbling, and then stir it every so often, especially once it starts to get reduced and get thicker. As it gets thicker, it's going to increase the likelihood of burning on the bottom. When it's very runny and water like, not so much. But as it gets thicker, the sugars will be concentrated and it's going to want to uh, more likely burn on the bottom. So as it gets thicker, you'll want to make sure to keep that heat down low and stir it frequently to make sure it doesn't uh, burn on you. After that, once it's the proper thickness, then you'll jar it or freeze it or whatever you want to do with it. So it's going to take a couple of hours to reduce this. Uh, we're going to reduce the 16 quarts down probably close to about 8 quarts. So it's going to take quite a few hours. It's great to do on a wintry day or a cold uh, fall day or rainy day because it's going to warm up the house depending what type of uh, stove or how you cook the sauce down. So I'm going to go cook this down and then I'll bring you back for part two where we actually can the sauce. So I'll see you in a couple of hours. Alright everybody, it's been several hours and our sauce has uh, reduced down to about half the original volume. Uh, it was originally about 8 quarts in here, and now I'm guessing there's maybe about 4 quarts in there or so. And I'm not sure if you can see the, um, maybe on the overhead camera. It's, it's reduced down somewhat, um, well actually quite a bit, 50% reduction. It's still kind of a little bit on the runny side, but that's okay because what I'm doing today is, if you recall, I'm going to use this just as sort of a raw tomato sauce, meaning just tomatoes and some salt. That way, if I want to use it, for a variety of things, it's not pre-seasoned, I don't have to worry about it. What I, what I mean is, if I want to make barbecue sauce, just a tomatoey barbecue sauce, say, or a smoky uh, barbecue sauce with some honey or some brown sugar, maybe some mushrooms, I'll have that good tomato flavor, no one wanted seasonings. Otherwise, if I want to use it for chili, then I can add some chili powder, some cumin, things like that. Or I can just make a traditional, you know, spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce, or pizza sauce. So I prefer to jar it 
uh, you know, pretty much plain a lot of the time. Sometimes I will pre-season it. I will make a separate video where I season it for maybe an Italian style or some other styles of sauce. But today I just want to show you how I jar this. Now, I have the jars warming up in here, so there's a couple of ways to do your canning. A lot of people just do a hot pack. You sterilize your jars in boiling water for about, I think it's 10 minutes. I'd have to double check. Check the guidelines or canning guidelines. You can look it up online from the government. But you sterilize your jars in boiling water. Then you would pull them out and put in your hot tomatoes. Put the lids on and then wrap them up and let them cool. Put a towel around them so they cool slowly. That is just the hot pack method. The second method would be, again, uh, sterilize your jars and then in hot water and then you put them in the water bath where they're fully covered with water and you boil them with water and I believe it's for about 20 minutes again double check the time what I'm going to do is the third method which is pressure canning so with pressure canning to be honest the sterilization of the jars isn't really critical or needed because you're going to sterilize it when it's in the pressure cooker but uh, what I did was I still washed them thoroughly and I didn't sterilize them in boiling water Instead, I've preheated them in an oven at 215 degrees. The reason I did that is not for sterilization, but to prevent thermal shock. So this sauce is approximately 212. It's boiling, right? So that's approximate temperature of that. The jars are approximately 215. And over here on the stove, I'll bring over, I have a pressure cooker preheating with about uh, four quarts of water. That way, everything will be close to the same temperature and there will not be any thermal shock to the jars. Now... I'm going to pull the jars out and I'll show you there's only two things you need to add when you're using this, this method, or well, any of the methods actually. You're going to use one teaspoon per quart of canning or pickling salt. And we're also going to, to make sure the pH is more acidic like. And I mean, I'm following all the guidelines to make this the safest possible canned or jarred tomato sauce. We're going to add half a teaspoon of citric acid. So using all these technique, techniques, this will be you know, the safest canned tomato sauce you could make. So it should really eliminate any worries you have. The combination of the salt, the citric acid, the pressure canning, you won't have to worry if you follow these steps. But many people, I said, just use the hot pack method or the hot water bath. You can use all those for tomato sauce. I'm going to show you the most elaborate process so you can, you know, know how this is done. So right now, I'll just use my uh, jar lifters and grab a hot jar. I'm actually going to grab a towel too, just in case. Okay. So we have our hot jar. We put our jarring or canning funnel on top. And now we just spoon our sauce in there. And you'll see as this goes in, the consistency. Now they tell you, the guidelines say, oh, they recommend maybe you put the salt or the citric acid in first. And that's just so you don't forget to do it. I like to do it at about the halfway point, or after I have one or two scoops in. So let me put my uh, one teaspoon of salt. Then I like to put some more in. And then I like to put the citric acid next. And this is only half a teaspoon. So by following all these steps, you're really doing everything you can to make this very safe from any types of uh, unwanted toxins or poisons that could develop in canning. And again, you don't have to follow all these steps for tomato sauce because tomato sauce is very acidic to begin with. But I just wanted to demonstrate with you um, this technique. Now you, you leave about, you, you only want to fill it up to about the, the bottom of the, the head here. You want to have a, up to an inch of head space. Right about there is good. Now, whenever you do this, you want to make sure the top is clean, the, the lid, so it can seal well. You want to make sure the very upper lip here is very clean. And you, now the lid, the uh, inner parts of the lids, you preheat. I had these in some hot water. So they're preheated, so the seal will make a great seal. Now I just put this on top, put it down, get a ring, tighten your ring. Now this is ready to go into the pressure cooker. I'll do another one, and then I'm going to do the rest off camera, and I'll bring the pressure cooker over here and show you the next step. So let me grab another jar. 
I'm just grabbing this extra towel here in case for some reason I slipped at the jar. I don't want to drop it. Okay. Close that. Put our canning funnel on top. We'll just put some sauce in this. And I like it to be a little on the runnier side when I do it like this. Because like I said, when I turn it into a barbecue sauce or a pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce or even homemade ketchup, I'm going to cook it some more most likely. And that way I won't have to add more moisture at that point in time. It already has plenty. So again, one teaspoon salt. Make sure it's canning or pickling salt. And one half teaspoon citric acid. Now again, I put them in together. It doesn't matter if you put them in first in the middle at the end just so they're in there now, as you recall I had two pots I have the other pot over on the stove with the other half of the sauce just gonna add a little bit more Okay, take that off, got our lid lifter, it's magnetized to pick up the lid, got one, put it on top, grab our ring, snug it down, there you go. So now I'm going to finish the rest of these, I'm going to do seven, my canner holds a seven quarts, so I'm going to do the other five real quick and then bring the pressure cooker over here and show you the next step, okay? Okay, as you can see, I have my seven quart jars filled, and the lids are sn uh, snug down the outside ring. You don't need to over tighten them; make them snug, but you don't have to, you know, go crazy tight on them. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out my rack in here, and preload this with the uh, quart jars. this water preheated so there's no thermal shock. I have it in there about four quarts and they're all in there nicely. <clears throat> now what you want to do is put your lid on. Now I'm probably going to have to, I don't know if this burner is actually powerful enough so I may have to transfer this to the uh, gas stove. But what you'll want to do <clears throat> is watch the steam come out of here. Once the steam starts coming out of here you want to time it for 10 minutes and that doesn't count towards your pressure cooking time. After that 10 minutes of steam coming out we're then going to put our 15 pound of pressure weight on here and we're going to process these at 15 pounds of pressure. So for quart jars of tomato sauce with 15 pounds of pressure the guidelines are 10 minutes. So after I see the steam come out of here for 10 minutes without this I'll then put this on once it starts to jiggle or well in this case this one uh, just has a gentle rocking. Once we have a gentle rocking, then I will time it uh, for 10 minutes of the gentle rocking. So we'll see if this doesn't develop enough pressure on here, I may have to take it to the stove and just bring you back when it's finished. If I can, I'll show you the intermediate steps, but this burner isn't quite as powerful as the gas stove. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I don't know if you can see on camera, but right now I have steam coming out of the main vent hole and also out of the handle because it hasn't developed pressure to turn on the locking mechanism yet. So as I see steam coming out of here and here, so now I'm going to time it for 10 minutes and when 10 minutes is up I'll put the weight on and then we'll go for 10 minutes after this starts to rock. So I'll bring you back here in 10 minutes. Okay it's been 10 minutes, my timer went off, we're still steaming so now I'm going to put the weight on. And I'm using a 15 pound setup on here which means it'll be uh, 10 minutes of processing time once it starts to rock. This one will rock. So this could take anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes for it to build up the pressure. And we don't start timing it until it starts to rock. It'll, it'll rock sort of like this. 
And when it does that, we'll then time it for 10 minutes and then turn off the heat and wait for it to cool down. So I'll bring you back here, um, probably not when it rocks, but when the time is up. So you'll see it rocking and then I'll, I'll show you that and then we'll take it off the heat and get ready to see the final product after that. So I'll bring you back here in probably, uh, you know, anywhere from 15 to, to uh, 20 minutes it'll take and I'll bring you back here. Okay everybody, this is what it looks like when it rocks at the 15 pounds of pressure. I had it going for about 10 minutes with this rocking and that's what we need to do. 15 pounds of pressure for 10 minutes is uh, perfect for quarts of tomato sauce. Can you see that? That's what you want. You don't want it to, to be a crazy rocking. You just want a nice gentle rocking motion like that for this, uh, this type of pressure cooker. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off and then we'll let this cool down. And this could take an easy 45 minutes before it cools down enough to take the lid off. At that point we need to pull them out and put them on a towel and, and put another towel around them so they cool gradually or we can just leave them cool for a couple of hours in here very gradually within that water. So it's going to take some time. I'm going to shut this off, let it cool and I'll bring you back here and we can look at the finished product. Okay everybody, it's been about 24 hours since I turned the heat off and left these here. So we're totally cooled down, so let's take a look and see what we have. Pull these out. Okay. And here's our seven quarts of plain tomato sauce. All pressure canned and ready to put away. So what you want to do is naturally make sure that they're all sealed and you'll want to take these rings off. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, I've seen them rust if you leave them on. And number two, if any of these seals go bad, if you have the ring on, you're not going to notice it. It'll hold it tight but bacteria will enter and start to grow. This way with the ring off, you'll see this lid pop off as the gases build up and you'll know that it's bad. So here's our seven jars of plain tomato sauce. Um, I hope you uh, found this useful. I showed you how to use the KitchenAid strainer attachment and then how to go through the proper procedures to do pressure canning of your sauce. Now I did a, a plain tomato sauce, but naturally you would use the same approach if you've made, you know, if you added other ingredients to your sauce. If you added meats or something, you would do a pressure canning approach. So in the, uh, let me know what you'd like me to do with this plain sauce. In the comment section, if you'd like me to make this into a, like a sweet, smoky barbecue sauce, or pizza sauce, or pasta sauce, or homemade ketchup, let me know what you'd like to, to see me do with this, and I'll try to put together a video using this sauce making that, uh, that recipe. So again, thank you, for, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, please press the thumbs up like, subscribe to my channel, and check it out and see if there's any other videos you'd like to see. I have quite a few listed there. So, thank you for watching.